Hey guys, Evan Griggs, educator for Minnesota Trout Unlimited. Today, I'm out fishing on Trout Brook, which is less than an hour outside of Minneapolis and St. Paul. And keep this hush hush, but there's really great brook trout fishing in here. This location is a restoration project that Minnesota TU and the DNR did a few years back. So as you can see, uh, a lot of native prairie has been restored. Um, and once we get into the water, you'll see how just beautiful and perfect trout habitat there is. Today, I'm gonna be teaching you guys about um, aquatic macroinvertebrates. Uh, essentially, that means water bugs. Uh, water bugs are the main diet for trout and streams, and there's a lot of them. And as beginning anglers, it can be confusing and difficult to know which ones to use um, and which species are which. So I'm gonna show you how to collect them, how to identify them, and I'll show you how to choose the right fly. Finding macros is simple. If you're just out fishing for a day, here's what you wanna look for. Find a shallow, rocky, fast-moving piece of water. Reach into the water, pick up a rock, and on the bottom of that rock, you're gonna see all these macros crawling around on it. Now today, I brought a few extra pieces of equipment that we use with our Trout in the Classroom program uh, to help us collect more of them and make it easier for us to identify them. The equipment I have with me today is a kick net, an ice cube tray, a big plastic tub, a biotic index, and a plastic spoon. I'll grab my stuff, let's get to the water. This is a fantastic spot to look for macros. Shallow, fast moving current, nice and rocky. So the macros will be living on these rocks, uh, eating algae and things. So I'm gonna jump in the water, roll one over, and we'll see what we can find. All right, so really this is simple as finding a nice rock in the current, rolling it over, and seeing what we can find. A lot of these insects are actually pretty small, so we have to look rather carefully. But right here, we have a little tiny casing of what's called a caddis. Uh, they're kind of like underwater caterpillars. And up on the tip here, we have some super tiny midge larvae. And midges are kind of like an umbrella term for all the annoying bugs like mosquitoes, black flies, things like that. So it's really simple. If you are just out here, out fishing or something, you don't need a bunch of equipment. All you need to do is pick up a rock and you turn into a scientist. Pretty cool. Let's do some more. Oh, here we go. So this big guy, we can actually see him swimming around there. That's a freshwater shrimp species. Uh, we call him a scud. And trout love eating scuds because they're a lot bigger and there's a lot more protein in them. So a lot of these bugs too need very clean, cold water. Um, in fact, they can't live, uh, certain species can't live in water if it has too much pollution in it. So if we find species like caddis, mayflies, uh, stone flies, those are really good indicators of clean water. Oh yeah, lots of caddis right here and a scud. So as you can see, each different rock has a lot of different species on it. Um, these bugs don't travel around a lot, so each rock is its own ecosystem. I'll bring out the other equipment and I'll show you a different way to sample, but if you're just out fishing, and need to quick see what the fish are eating, picking up some rocks is a great way to do it. So we're gonna demonstrate how to use a kick net next uh, to sample macroinvertebrates. I've enlisted the help of our fishing skills instructor, Hiroto. Hello. And we're gonna work together to capture a whole bunch of bugs using one of these nets. Step one, unravel the net. Step two, uh, have the person holding the net face upstream and hold the net straight down against the rock so it's up and down. My job is to bust my best dance moves 
uh, to kick up the rocks on the bottom to allow those bugs to let go and float into our net. So you just do some disco, whatever you got, kick up the bottom really good. After a little bit, then we can close up the net, lift it up, open up, and it reveals all the insects that were hiding on those rocks in the bottom. So we're able to now be able to see a whole bunch of these bugs. We've got a bunch of scuds, we've got a few mayflies, a few midges, absolutely amazing. So now we'll take this sample, bring it over to shore, and we'll put it into our tubs and our ice cube trays so we can get a better look at them. Let's go ahead and do that. Cool. Nice job. So now that we're back, we have a good sampling of macros in our net. What we're going to do is just set these guys here and we're gonna fill up our tubs with water. And at this point, we're just gonna try and pick out as many bugs as we can from our net. And if there's any that are super cool, we'll put them into the individual containers of our ice cube tray. Uh, you can either use your spoon to do this, or you can just use your fingers. I'm not scared of them, so I'm gonna use my fingers to pick them out. But there are a ton, it is like Scud City down in this little stream. There are everywhere. Uh, so that's a really good thing for me as a fly angler to take note of. If I'm seeing a lot of scuds in my sampling and in the uh, uh, vegetation, I should probably use a scud fly because uh, the fish are probably eating a whole bunch of those. So I found some cool scuds. I'm going to throw them in my container here. So right here, we just found a little mayfly nymph. So I'm going to pick him up, set him into the tub. And by putting them in these tubs, they're able to breathe, they'll swim around, crawl around more. Um, so it's a pretty neat way to be able to observe these insects uh, more naturally underneath the water. Here's another mayfly. Nice! What I do with my ice cube tray is if I find species that are alike, um, I'll put all the scuds in one, I'll put all the mayflies in one, um, so that way you can kind of count how many you're finding of each too. If you're finding a clear majority like I, we are with scuds right now, uh, it's a good indication of what kind of fly we should use. So this sheet is called a biotic index and it's really useful for us to be able to identify insects as well as uh, understand what water quality they can live in. It's broken into five groups. The first two groups need the cleanest water. Groups three and four can live in pretty high levels of pollution. And group five, they don't count because they can fly and live anywhere. Uh, so judging by the bugs we found today, we found some scuds which are in a group three. They call them fairly tolerant, so they can live in pretty good levels of pollution. So our mayflies are found in group two, and they're moderately intolerant, which means they need very clean water to survive in. But when they're sitting in the water like this, they'll leave their three tails splayed out really nicely. So I like to remember mayflies, they have three tails. There's three letters in the word may. They got a tail for each letter, it's perfect. So now that we've identified the macros that we found, scuds and mayflies, we can take a look on our fly boxes and see if we have flies that one, match their size, two, their profile, and three, their color. To imitate our scuds here, I have a perfect gray scud fly. And to imitate our mayflies that are a little bit smaller, darker color, really skinny, I also have a fly to imitate them that has a very thinly tied body um, with three tails to imitate a mayfly. We found a whole bunch of mayfly nymphs and scuds today. So I think I'm gonna tie on some of those. I'm gonna start fishing. Thanks for watching everybody. Next time you're on a stream, try looking at the macros. See if you can figure out what the fish are eating by what you find. 
I've tied on my scud fly, so I'm gonna go check out a good pool downstream. I'll see you next time. <laughs>